Hi everybody. Well, since the day I first published a video on how to add a power on light to your DXi back in October 2009, almost two and a half years ago, many different companies are now manufacturing them. My power on light only cost 99 cents and took a whole total of 20 minutes to put in. Personally, spending 45 to 150 just for a backlight defeats the purpose of my KISS theory. You know, at my age, all I really need is a simple power on light. If I wanted the whole shebang, I'd get a DX8 or something better. You know, I'm not all that interested in telemetry either because I don't want to have to worry about anything. My battery voltage is a little bit low or something. If it's an emergency, just send me an audible warning. I'll laugh. But I don't want to have to worry about so much stuff. You know, and I don't worry about PM or how high it is because if I can't see it, it's too high. <laughs> I also own a dumb phone. <laughs> it only takes pictures, plays music, has a mini SD card, sends and receives text, and has been dropped many, many times without fail. And you know what? You can even talk to people on it. So if you're the kind of pilot that actually likes to watch your aircraft fly and be able to relax while doing that, this simple light setup may be for you, especially if you're a night flyer. I bought a third Spectrum DX6i, which is the same as my others, except this one also has DSM2X technology. That means it's capable of a wider band. Uh, compared to a river or a stream of info that it's transmitted to your receiver, the DMS2X is referred to as a river. I bought another Spectrum because the mystery radio has not come out yet, and a DX6i is really good value for the money. I can buy two of them for what a DX8 costs. Not as many models you say, well fine, but if something goes wrong I only lose 10, not 30. So you know, if I had to send it in, I can still fly with my other radios. And you know, when it comes back from a repair factory, you know you would have to check every single detail in your programming before flying to be safe and sure. I don't like all my eggs in one basket, so I hope you please understand my thoughts. You know, since there are no backlights or lights on the transmitter, I found myself several times leaving the transmitter on after a night of flying. Like I said, I made a video similar to this one before, and many have asked me since to tell the value of the resistor and the LED and show better hook up where the power is. So that's why I'm doing this now. You know, my logic is based on fuzzy algorithms, and I know many of you also tell me to go buy a backlight and put it behind the screen, but this is expensive. And look, I really don't need to see the screen in the dark to program it, because I don't fly in the dark without trimming in the daylight first. It's that way I don't have to worry about trimming it at night. I don't need to see anything. Even the most inexpensive radios have an LED power indicator. <laughs> and also, I'm pretty spoiled with my color-coded transmitters, so I wanted to also color-code my new one. I can see it when they're on at a glance from a distance and when laying down flat. So this is my solution, it works pretty well, and also the light is raised. So enough of an intro, here we go. Well hi everybody, a lot of people asked me about this again because they wanted to make sure they could see where I connected the wires up. I added a simple 99 cent LED to my uh, transmitter here and I'm going to show you how I hooked that up. A lot of you in my last video a long time ago uh, weren't sure where exactly uh, I hooked the wires up to run this little power LED. I know they make LED strips for the background and everything. I don't need any of that. All I need is a power on light so I can tell from a distance when it's laying down flat whether it's on or off. So again I'm going to show you how I hook this up. Okay, take the back off the transmitter and unplug the wires so you can get to the right plug. It's at the bottom right hand side of the transmitter. Well, I simply melted the insulation on the black and red wires and then soldered the leads to it. Uh, that way I didn't have to cut the wires. And not having any liquid insulation, I just used Amazing Goop to insulate the wires after soldering them. Well, then I hooked the wires to the LED. Black wire to the resistor, then to the negative, that's the short leave, and then the red wire to the positive for the long lead. I use heat shrink tubing to tighten it all up. Now I'm going to drill a hole up here in the transmitter and put the light in. I'm going to drill a quarter inch hole right through the case here to start with.
Okay, I'm using the yellow lens this time because I have a red one and a green one in my other ones. You can get these lenses at any lighting store. And after you drill that hole, all you have to do is just push that down in. And there it is. It's in. It looks pretty good too. Okay, the next thing I do is just take a tiny little bit of amazing goop. Don't need much for this. Take your LED and put a little bit on the side here. Just enough. And drop that down into the hole. Like that. And now when I turn that on, I have light. Okay, make sure everything looks good. Put your transmitter back together, put the case back on. What you want to do is don't forget to put this plug on here or it will be really bummed when you put it all back together and then have to take it all back apart. So if you want to keep it simple like me, I hope this LED installation video helps you a bit by seeing how I did it. Of course there are many ways to slice a pizza. This is just my way to fix my problem. So thanks a lot for watching.